Hello physical science students, welcome to Equations of Motion, video number four, vertical motion thrown upward. So we've done so far vertical motion dropping and throwing, and now we're going to give it an initial velocity in the up direction. And so this represents, uh, like we've all probably thrown a tennis ball up in the air and caught it again, and this is what we're doing in terms of the physics of it. Um, so this is sort of like a time lapse. The ball leaves your hand with an initial velocity and then decelerates as it goes up due to gravity. It reaches its highest point, it then falls due to gravity. Now we've done this, that's the same as dropping. Okay, We just haven't done this. Um, but it's not that difficult because all it's doing is decelerating due to gravity. And one way of visualizing that is perhaps look at the motion graphs um, for going up and coming down. And so as it goes up, remember this is displacement versus time. So the slope here would represent the velocity. It starts with the maximum velocity, and then the velocity shallows down to zero, and then you get a negative velocity as it comes down. And this is what it's showing here. Positive velocity maximum decreases. This is the topmost point, so it stops for an instant, um, and then it gets negative velocity. Now what do you think the slope of that would be? That should be minus 9.8, because it's, di it's uh, under the influence of gravity, and that's what we're showing here. Notice at this point here, when the ball is at the very top, gravity doesn't turn off. Gravity is still acting there. A lot of students like to think, especially when they're asked, what is the acceleration at the highest most point um, of going up and coming down? And students just like to think gravity turns itself off. It doesn't. Um, if gravity turned itself off, the ball would just hover there forever because there needs to be a force acting on it to make it come down. And so it's always minus 9.8. And we've got this little video here to show you. So there's the ball going up, slowing down to a stop for an instant. Gravity's still acting on it, and it falls back down. And we might just show that again. So this is our displacement, this is our velocity, and this is the acceleration. Okay. And so the going up and the going down are just mirror images of each other. And that's what's being shown in this diagram here. If we throw the ball up at 20 metres per second, um, now they're using, again, a Queensland textbook, using 10 metres per second, we would use 9.8. Um, the ball goes up, reaches the top of the flight where the velocity is zero. Um, it's half of the total, takes half as much time to go up as it does to do the whole flight. So it takes, another way of saying, it takes as long to go up as it does to come down. So if you want the total flight, you just need to work out the flight it, goes, it takes to go up, time it takes to go up, and then times it by two. Um, and notice also that if we launch it at plus 20 meters per second, we would catch it here at minus 20 meters per second, because the rate it slows down is the rate at which it speeds up on the way down. So it's all symmetrical. Good way to think about it. Uh, this is another diagram. Just uh, what they've done here is analyze it in one point. So here, uh, again, throwing it up at 20, using minus 10. Going up, uh, after one second, it would have a velocity of 10, so it would have decreased from 20, um, but it would have gone 15. Up here, it stops for an instant and then falls down. Notice these two are symmetrical, but the only difference is here the velocity is up, so it's positive. Here the velocity is down, so it's negative. Here the velocity is up 20, here it's down 20. So, what can we say from in terms of general uh, or generalizations about up and down flight for us in physical science? Well, the velocity equals zero at the top of flight. Now that's really handy because sometimes we want to 
just analyze half the flight. Time of flight up equals the time of flight down, so it takes as long to go up as it does to come down. Acceleration is constant, even at the top of the flight. So when the velocity is zero, right at the top here, acceleration doesn't turn off, it's still on. Okay. The initial speed equals final speed, because we haven't got a direction. Okay, we're not talking about velocity. So the initial speed equals the final speed. The final velocity equals the negative of the initial velocity. So that's where we just change the direction. Air resistance we neglect or can be neglected in the, most of our cases. So let's do a couple of examples. Um, let's fire up the pen. Here we have a ball is thrown vertically upwards at 20 meters per second. Ignore air resistance and take, now we're going to do it in 9.8, using 9.8. How high does it go? Common question. Time it takes to reach the height, so that's the time for half the flight. Time taken to reach the ground from the highest point, so B and C should be equal, shouldn't they? And the final velocity and the time of flight. So get a question like this, read it once to visualise, make sure you understand what's happening. Um, and then read it again to make sure to extract the information. So we're looking at something that goes like this. That was pretty slow. Okay, so we're starting here, um, we're reaching here. Now, if we look at the information that we're given, U, V, A, S, and T, if we're just looking at half the flight, for example, we would say that this initial velocity is 20 meters per second to the minus one. The final velocity is zero, so we're just looking up here. So we're going from here to here. The acceleration is gonna be minus 9.8 meters per second to the minus two. We don't know how high it's going to go, and we don't know how long it will take. And so, for part A, we want to find S. So if we're doing A, knowing these three things, and only looking at half the flight, um, we would say that V squared equals U squared plus 2A. S is the equation we're going to use. V is equal to 0. We've got 20 squared plus 2 minus... 9.8 S and so this is going to be equals now 20 squared is 400 plus minus 19.6 S so we bring the 400 across to the other side so that becomes minus 400 because this is plus 400 minus 19.6 S so we now divide by the 19.6 to get S by itself. If I lose the, you in the maths anyway, just holler out and I can talk you through it in more detail. And so that equals S. So S is equal to 20.4 meters. And we need to say up. We don't need to say up because it's positive, but because we've defined down as negative with this value here. Um, but it's a good idea just to reinforce that. So that gives us A. What about the time taken? Well, that's part B. We could use V equals U plus AT. Remember, there may be more than one way of doing this. Once we know four things, we can actually solve it in a variety of ways. Um, but just putting our values in, uh, what's this, 20, put that in brackets, plus minus 9.8 T. So now this becomes minus 20 divided by minus 9.8 equals T. T equals 2.04 seconds. I've missed a line of working there, but hopefully you understand what I've done. So now we've worked out how high it goes, time to reach this height, so the half the flight. 
what about the time taken to reach the ground? So for part C, it's going to be the same. It takes as long to fall as it does to go up. So we can say T equals 2.04 seconds. What about D, the final velocity? Now we could calculate this, knowing all the values, or because we know our physics, we could say that V equals minus 20 meters per second to the minus one, because we're ignoring air resistance. And E, the time of flight, so I would call this F flight equals two times T that we worked out before. So that's going to give us two, whoops, let's get rid of that. That's a mistake. Just got to correct my mistake. It's going to be 4.08 seconds. All right, so we've now worked out that, and that's a pretty typical question. Um, we're always going to land at the same height that we throw it from. And so the only tr real trick here is to recognize just to look at half the flight. And that makes life a lot easier. So let's get rid of this now. And we can see, should be able to see the worked answers. Okay, remembering that I used minus 10 and they've actually done the calculations whereas we just used our physics knowledge to work out C and D and also E, they calculated E but you don't have to and they used the quadratic equation I think no they didn't, they just solved it um, but we did it a lot easier than that so now you should be able to do all the vertical motion questions that I've given you and in the next video, we'll look at projectile motion, which gets even more complicated. Cheerio!